Hello, ACCA students. Today we are looking at paper APM, Advanced Performance Management, and I'm going to show you how to perform the calculations for net present value, modified internal rate of return, and IRR, internal rate of return. We're going to use the past exam question METIS to do the calculations and check out all of the CBE exam technique that you need to get a pass. So let's get started. So I've got the past exam question open. Boy, a lot of text. We're not dealing with the written parts right now with the discussion requirements. We're only looking at the discounted cash flow requirements, which we can see here. Um, he has suggested that you consider measures such as NPV, EVA, and MIRR. So we're going to look at the NPV and the, uh, and the MIRR parts in the video right now. Now the information that we need from the exhibit on P&L is right here. So we're going to be working with these three years right up here. 2010 to 2012 and I can find wow a detailed report isn't it too detailed a little bit cluttered we come to the bottom and guys we can find a net P&L before interest and tax right here so those are the three numbers that I will need as my starting place now, if I look in, into the P&L, I can see depreciation is a big line, and we know that depreciation is not a cash flow. So if I'm turning the profit into cash flow, we'll need to add that back. And these notes are also important to me. The business was founded with $600,000, 250000 in equity, so the remainder would be 350000 which was from a loan, okay? And we're paying back the loan at 8.4% interest per year. The cost of capital estimated, so that's the finance cost for this business, it's 12.5. And when we earn money on our projects, we deposit the funds that we earn in the bank at a lower risk um, interest rate, right? We deposit at 4.5% rather than reinvesting in new restaurants at 12.5%. And John wishes us to use the 600,000 as the initial investment line when we are doing these discounted cash flow type of questions. We also need the tax rate of 30%. Okay, so let me get the spreadsheet ready and we'll make quick work of NPV, MIRR, and we'll throw in IRR just for, just for fun. I have the ACCA spreadsheet tool opened. This is what we'll use to make quick work of these challenging calculations. And because we are performing the discounted cash flow calculations, we need to get the operating cash flows. First step there is to work in each year. And we're going 2010, 2011, 2012. These will be my column headings. I'm going very light with the formatting. There are no marks for formatting, so I do the minimum amount required to make my work understandable. Now, to get to the net cash flow, we need the profit before interest and tax. Then we need to add back that non-cash expense of depreciation. Simple Abbreviations like this are fine. The marking team is going to understand what you are writing there. Tax is, of course, a cash flow. We need to consider that. And if we net those three rows, we will get our cash flow line. Okay. So it's just a matter now of pulling those profits from the question 31,200, 199, 
five seven nine and a two six two three two two depreciation we will add back and that is one hundred and twenty thousand per year so I can just do a little copy paste paste now our tax rate is 30 percent so we will get that profit before interest in tax line which will be equal to profit before interest in tax multiplied by a negative 0 0.3 to show that tax rate and we can now just copy paste paste using the windows functionality of control c control v last but not least let's deploy the sum function so we open equal sign sum let's grab the columns above the rows above excuse me copy paste paste guys there we have our operating cash flows looking a little messy let's clean this up I'm going to apply some light formatting there wouldn't be a mark for this Okay, but just let's present our work in a professional manner. So I'm going here. This is essentially the only formatting that, that I need. I'm coming here. I'm setting it to thousand separator, no decimal places. And let me underline row five for good measure to show that the figures below are totals. The first calculation we will perform is net present value. Let's use the functionality in the spreadsheet tool to save a lot of time. So I need three lines. The first line will be my discounted cash flows, DCF. And let's just use the NPV function to make quick work of that. So we open the equal sign, NPV for the function. We open a parenthesis and the first argument is the discount rate. In the question, they tell us that the cost of capital 12.5%. So we do a 0 0.125, expressing it in decimal places. Okay, We put a comma, and then I simply grab the range of cells that I'm discounting. And look at that. Now that's kind of unreadable, so now I will need to format that more neatly. I'll come here. Okay, And we learn in that question that the initial investment was the 600,000 and we'll make that negative and the difference will be NPV okay that is equal to the sum of those two lines above yes you could do C8 plus C9 but I'm just so used to doing the function there maybe I can grab all of this now the better way to do that just grab all of it format it once Let's put an underline there. Ladies and gents, we've now calculated NPV. Okay, let's make that bold so it jumps off the page for the marker so they can see what we're doing. Let's now calculate internal rate of return. The question did not ask for that, but why not practice with it? So the internal rate of return, that is the discount rate that gives us a zero NPV. Let me zoom out a bit. Now I'm going to need to change my layout a tiny bit here. And in order to do the IRR, we need the full range of cash flows. So we need the year zero. When we do the NPV formula above, we only grab the cash flows from years one to three. To do IRR, we need years zero to three. So let me set this up in a new way, okay? I'm going to go years zero, one, two, three. Now we can put a line for the CF in year zero or at the beginning of year one, right? Year zero shows the beginning of year one and we invest 600 
thousand. Now, at the end of year one, we get this cash flow here, the 141840. So I'm just using my relative cell addressing. Copy, paste, paste. Look at that. Okay. Again, let's clean this up with a little bit of formatting. I can grab that. Set it to no decimal places there. And friends, IRR is now just a matter of using the function that is equal to IRR, those three letters, open up the bracket, and we need to grab one negative. We need one negative in the range of cells for it to work. So we have our year zero negative there. Okay. And we need to set that to a percentage. And we get a 7.6%. Last but not least, let us now calculate modified internal rate of return. Now, the problem with using IRR here is that IRR assumes that all of the cash flows get reinvested at the 7.6%. However, they told us, in, told us in the story that this company will reinvest at 4.5%. So using modified IRR, okay, we're going to break down this range of cash flows. And we're going to find the future value of the inflows which get compounded because we deposit that money in the bank. So it grows compound interest of 4.5%. However, our cost of finance is different. That's 12.5%, right? So we're essentially borrowing the negative, we're borrowing the 600,000 at 12.5% and then reinvesting at 4.5%. Modified IRR gives us a solution that considers those two rates. So all we have to do, modified internal rate of return, it's going to be equal, equals MIRR, open parentheses. First argument, grab your range of cash flows including year zero, comma. Now we put in the financing rate, which is our cost of capital, 0 0.125. And then the final argument is the deposit rate, okay? So the reinvestment rate. So that's 0 0.045. Close out the brackets. Reformat that to a percentage. And there we go. We are rocking, team. We've calculated the modified internal rate of return nice and quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Discounted cash flow techniques in paper APM. I hope you found this useful. Guys, good luck on your upcoming exams. This is Steve, signing out.